Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, very good morning to you all and welcome to AFI Group webinar on hazards associated with the use of MUPS. My name is Brian Parker and I'm the uh, Business Development Manager, Technical Support for the, group, for the AFI Group of Companies. Now, running time for this webinar is approximately 45 uh, to 50 minutes, and I am aiming to finish around about 11.15 um, with a very short um, Q&A session afterwards. Um, if you have any questions, you know, please feel free to ask them in the webinar. You'll see where you can ask the questions. Um, as always, I'll endeavor to do uh, and to, to close out as many as I possibly can. However, those that I can't, I will uh, close out afterwards um, directly to yourselves. I'm conscious, however, that not all people will ask questions during the webinar. That's just the nature of, of how it goes. So feel free to email me you know, with any other questions you may have or indeed any other support that you may require uh, afterwards. OK, so we've got uh, nice to see some familiar faces, uh, familiar names on the webinar. Thank you for attending. Um, this webinar is live, so um, I'm in the uh, I'm in the realms of uh, the gremlins of IT as usual. So hopefully everything will go OK. Um, so today's webinar is all about hazards associated with the use of MUPS. Um, little picture of myself there. I've been in this industry now over 20 years. Um, huge amount of experience on on MUPS training, safety, um, you know, and looking after you know rental companies. Um, and in my time, you know, I've been, uh, you know, quite quite uh, involved heavily with some of the uh, the industry federations, um, and and still now sit on various sort of working groups and, and committees. So, uh, you know, anything that you, I can help, you know, feel free to, uh, you know, always message me. So, just a bit of an agenda. Um, obviously, from you know, not to teaching you to, uh, to to do your job, but you know, when when undertaking any risk assessments associated with the use of MUPS. You know, there are things that we need to consider. We need to make sure that whatever we're doing in terms of risk assessment is suitable and sufficient um, and, and fit for purpose. Um, so in, agenda is very, very uh, brief insofar as the fact that we're going to look at the, um, the code of practice for the safe use of MUPS. Some of you uh, may have been on my previous um, webinar where I actually introduced this because it was it was new out in October last year. Um, but now I want to focus a little bit more of some of the parts within the, within the actual standards. So, you know, the, 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 the looking at the hazards of, of various aspects of, of doing the job. So, for example, transportation, delivery and collection. Collection and delivery both happen on your site. You're responsible for it. It may, it may well be possibly, you know, quite, you know, I don't need to worry about it because it's the rental company, um, you know, coming to do that. However, you know, we know from some of the... Um, you know some of the information out there um, that um, you know things we need to make sure that this is done safely. We'll look at positioning of, MU of the MUP. Lots of incidents, you know, in, over the years, um, and we're only really sort of getting to, to grips with that data now with this accident working group that's been formed by IPAF, International Powered Access Federation, to look at you know you know when these incidents happen, when the accidents happen. So positioning of the MUP is, is key to make sure that we're doing it properly and. and some of the thoughts and considerations that we need to take into account. Clearly, the business end use of the MUP, you know, you hire them, you have them, you buy them, you rent them, you know, for getting the jobs done. So, you know, what considerations do we need to give, you know, when the machine's up in the air and, and you, know, you know, people are up in the air carrying out the work. And, and lastly, a little bit about maintenance and thorough examinations of the MUP. So just generally looking at some of the some of the aspects. Most of that possibly will be done, you know, in the rental depot or, or in your own, you know, yards and such. Um, but um, you know, equally, some of it may be um, may be done um, actually on site. I'm just going to um, just to give me a bit of uh, um, an insight into yourselves. Um, can you just tell me? You'll see now there's going to be a poll pop up, um, and what I want you to do is just a, you know, a bit of engagement here. Tell me in relation to the regards to MUPS. What do you do in this in this aspect? You'll see what I mean when the, when it comes up there. Um, so you can see there now. There's a poll open. So do you hire it in from rental companies? Have you got your own, or or do you borrow and lend uh, the machines off someone else? So if you can just click accordingly, uh, what you do that, and that gives me a bit of a scope for um, you know for how um, you know how the mutes have been used. You know certainly on this on this webinar today. I 
All right, so I'm taking there. That's um, all right. Eighty-nine percent of you have voted, so there's still some of you either not attending, att in attendance, busy calling off emails, chatting with somebody, or or, or whatever. But um, okay, we'll close it there. All right, but I, from what I can see, the vast majority of you actually hiring your moves and, and to be fair I kind of expected you expected that but there are 12% of you that actually have your own machines on site and and 6% of you that um, you know borrow or lend the machines of somebody else so thank you for your honesty there that, that's that's great and uh, it gives me a bit of an insight as to you know how to how to sort of structure the web webinar to make sure it's a little bit more personal to you so I'm I'm hoping some of you have seen the code of practice BS8460 um, so a British standard code of practice is essentially a set of written rules. Um, you know, I'm not um, I'm not sure for you know, but the British standard in itself is not law. Um, any code of practice is essentially there to supplement and support, you know, the regulations that we have. Um, now, with regards to regulations, there are a myriad of regulations out there, and you know, probably don't need to tell you that that you know you need to do a lot of of uh, you know, research and a lot of, of works to ensure that, you know, you're carrying out, your, you know, your, uh, your jobs correctly and safely. And you only have to look at, uh, you know, some of the recent fines with the health and safety sentencing guidelines to know that, you know, that potentially, um, you know, there is, there is potentially a huge um, financial burden on businesses. So with, it, with regards to MUPS, there's been a huge amount of guidance written um, by associations such as IPAF, the CPA. Um, and sometimes it, it is quite daunting the amount of information that's available and, um, and you know often you don't know where to start you know often don't know where to stop but ultimately you know it's your responsibility to make sure that you've got a suitable and, and sufficient risk, risk assessment and when I say yours that's if you're an employer and obviously if you're if you've deemed that you are the person that's carrying out risk assessment now what this code of practice essentially does is bring all the information together and then signpost you uh, to further guidance that's there so in essentially it's they're not legal to follow them um but however and, and they have been used in criminal or civil proceedings um that you know statutory regulations have been contravened um however you may have very good systems in place you know great that's not that's not a, that's not an issue and you know compliance with the british standard cannot confirm immunity from legal, legal obligations so essentially you know just you don't have to follow it i would suggest possibly that you ha if you haven't got the code of practice um, uh, BS8460 2017 that you look at you know purchasing it um, it's not the cheapest thing if you're a BSI member um, you're going to get it for £127 my memory correct uh, serves me right um, if you're not a BSI member it's going to cost you a sort of thick end of 250 quid. but you know end of day it may be uh, it may be little money insofar as uh, potentially the, the risks that could be uh, financially and, and, and obviously personal um, you know uh, with yourselves if uh, should should something go wrong okay so um i can see when when, when you guys re uh, and girls register for the, the webinar i can see the names it doesn't tell me your titles so i've got no um preconceived uh, idea as to who's uh, or what responsibilities you have within your business so to, to brief it out and to start it out the code of practice does give us specific hazards that are pertinent to the use of MUPS, okay? So a hazard, hazard defined, um, you know, something potential to cause harm. The term hazards and risk are often used interchangeably. Um, however, in terms of risk assessment, these are two very, very distinct terms and you should never get them mixed up. Hazard is anything that can cause harm to damage to humans, to property, to the environment. And risk is defined as the probability that exposure to, a hand, to that hazard could potentially lead to a, a negative consequence. You know, if there's no hazard, essentially there's no risk. Um, but you know, going through today and, and looking at this, I just want to try and raise your you know awareness of things. If you've got hazard, it's up to you to determine how much of that is a risk, and and that's sometimes down to subjectivity and you know the probability of of, of happening, what what things you've done, um, you know, uh, you know what training you've given, what experience people have got. So as part of managing the health and safety of business, you must control your risk in your workplace. You know that. Um, um, but to do this, you need to take, uh, you know, step back, think about what might cause harm to people and decide whether you're taking unreasonable steps to prevent that harm. And this is known essentially as, as risk assessment. Um, it's something that you're required to do by law. If you're fewer than five employees, you don't have to write anything down. So essentially, you don't need to document it. But in my experience, it's probably better having it in written form the way that, uh, you know, laws go in these days and, and, and litigation. 
Now remember, a risk assessment is not about creating huge um, amounts of paperwork, and I'm not implying that you do that. Yeah, let's keep it simple. Let's keep it, you know, straightforward so people can understand it. Um, it's about identifying sensible measures to control the risks, you know, from using that MUPS. Now, some may seem obvious, you know, some hazards. Uh, some may not, though. You know, not so. So, you know, for example, electric pylons. I know that if I go too close to them, you know, my mum and dad taught me, you know, it's going to end up with a bad day. I can remember back in the 70s when I was growing up, we had all the adverts about flying your kite and fishing rods. And, you know, some of you might smile thinking about, oh, yeah, I remember that. We don't see that these days. But that was back then. Uh, and they, 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 they warned you. Nowadays, we've got other things, you know, such as IR and RF, you know, antennas. And, and what potential risks do they pose? We can put somebody up in the air and we know straight away that there is a, you know, essential risk that, you know, falls and falling objects could be quite, quite evident. So, you know, when it, sometimes they are obvious, sometimes they may not be. OK, but, you know, why do we take risks? Now, I'm not wishing to be rude to any of the people that's depicted in these images. Um, and you may have even seen some of these before. And, but I'm sure and I hope that none of these went out intentionally uh, with the intention of hurting themselves on this day when these photographs were taken. The fact that the photographs were taken, I would like to think somebody intervened and said, you know, can you get down? I'm sure they have sons, daughters, they have sisters or brothers. Um, and yet you can still see from the photos and some of the video footage that I will show throughout um, this webinar that people still decide to take risks to get the job done. Nevertheless, I do wonder sometimes what goes through their heads prior to them, prior to them deciding on, 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 you know, I'm going to go and re-roof or re-sheet or fix a light or, you know, um, or carry out some sort of works to the, um, you know, to the, you know, flashing or, or cladding. So it, it is it is somewhat to, um you know, sometimes worrying. So um, I'm just going to quickly show you a video. Hopefully you'll see this. Some of you may have already seen it before. And, you know, we can smile and look and think, oh, yeah, he got away with that. But, you know, th th it's always bizarre to me that we video something instead of intervening. Um, but, you know, I suppose if, if, if for the sake of this one person, there's maybe a lesson learned for a lot of other people. So I'll just play this it's only a couple of seconds long. Told you the IT gremlins would get me. I'm sure they wait and learn. Right, okay, so proves proves this is alive. All right, so yeah, what you probably didn't hear and uh, there's a bit of laughing and a bit of a bit of joking that somebody's um, you know fallen out of a machine. But you know that's somebody who's possibly not going to go home. You know certainly in the uh, in the um, you know in the, in the right way in which they were in the, which they attended work. So you know it's always a bit sometimes a little bit uh, in my view a little bit sad that we see things like that. So. Competence. Um, now, within 8460, it defines somebody or, or, de or defines what is a competent person. Um, and the HSC, bless them, they do have various definitions. Now, from a mute perspective, um, to carry out any risk assessments, you must be competent to do so. And there are various training courses that you can take, you know, take such as your IPATH operators course. You can go and do a mute for managers course. Um, but essentially, you've got to carry out that risk assessment. It may be your responsibility. So you've got to understand, understand, understand potential hazards, look at any de, you know, technical defects or emissions, recognize potential implications for health and safety caused by any defects or emissions, and clearly be able to specify a, a remedial action to mitigate those implications. All right, so quite straightforward. So getting into the into the code of practice, um, it breaks it down uh, into four clear stages. So in this situation, what I've given you here is an example of, for example, when a machine is being um, uh, lifted. Um, so, um, so for example, transport and delivery. So this, so in the risk assessment, it has the stage, and then for example here it says transport and delivery. The activity 
you can't unload it by traditional methods. Okay, you've got to lift it. All right, once you've lifted it, there is a hazard. All right, now the hazard could be either overturning, potentially crushing, overturning of that lifting equipment, so basically flipping itself over, or, or, or impact with anything else. And if anybody's ever seen anything, you know, lifted off, you know, been, been in London on big jobs, you know, where you, you know, the, you can't unload. You know, the crane, the tower crane comes down, it picks the, it picks the plant up, and, and, and away it goes. All right. So you know, the cause in that set, in that area may be unsafe lifting, op, lifting operation. It could be, um, you know, um, faulty lifting equipment. It could be, you know, untrained people. There's, there's various many aspects there. Now within the standard, then it then does then goes and gives you the reference so the clause from inside the standard so you know you might see the machine on the on the left there you know big uh, genie 135 there seen them lifted okay so you know you're talking best part of 22 ton um you know and and, and up it goes and and unfortunately you know the, these can be you know you know very very easy things to do um but we've got to consider things when we are lifting it we've got to follow the manufacturer's designated lifting points they should be used okay when fitted if, for example, a boom, a slew lock should be engaged, and that would prevent movement. It would prevent uh, the centre of gravity shifting during the operation. Care should be taken, you know, clearly when you're lifting the load, um, that you do it slowly, it's gradually, and when you're landing the load, to avoid any shock load to the machine. Shock loading, dropping that machine down, it can cause damage to wheels, chassis, you know, hubs, etc. Um, and of course, if you're lifting up onto an open structure, which is above ground level, that in itself can create a, create additional hazards. For example, uh, taking in, you know making sure that the ground can take the weight, that the structure can take the weight. Um, anything that you're taking in, so far as the mupe itself, um, can absorb that load. Okay, because that that is going to impose quite an amount of, of weight. And of course, that um, you know there's precautions to ensure that it's not going to roll away you know we, we we lower these things down and you know it's not going to drive off the edge of something and, and such like that you can see also there on <clears throat> up on the top right we've got um, a toolbox talk so you know with the ipath um, um, uh, accidents that we've had and incidents collection and data okay we've looked at um, you know the amount of incidents that happened and what they've done then is created some type of um, you know, toolbox talk and, and poster, which ha is, is happily known as Andy Access. And they've got a, a number of these. They're free. You can just order them, download them. You can personalize them with your own company data um, and, 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 what, um, and what you've got. So what I'm going to do now um, is just um, go to another poll. What do you think is the biggest hazard when using MUPES? And again, this uh, launches uh, now. OK, so that usually see the poll, the poll now come up. So if you can just please uh, let me know what you're thinking. And I've not put the pictures on there to confuse anybody at all. You know, I'm just giving you one sort of aspect as to, you know, some of the, uh, you know, some of the issues that happen um, when, when, we're, when we're doing, uh, you know, mute activities as such. And quite evenly set, to be fair. Um, there's 88 of you, percent of you that's uh, voted, so there's still a few that are, uh, you know, either distracted by other matters. It's gone up now, 90 odd. Okay, got another five seconds or so. I'm just conscious of time. Okay, right, that'll do. All right, so essentially uh, we've got a joint uh, um, winners, uh, collisions and overturns. You think it's the biggest hazards, followed by falls and then falling objects. Okay, right. So if we um, if we if we look at um, the standard itself again, uh, and then we look at the transport and delivery hazards, um, earlier I mentioned it would be a, some type of activity, and it's a common activity is load and loading. So essentially, when mupes are requested by clients, it generally follows a process. Now I'm conscious that some of you have your own mupes, some of you also borrow machines from other people. Now. Um, if you, had, for example, if you'd self-specified a machine for the task, you know, you're actually certain about the machine that you want, uh, or you've engaged with a rental company to have the task surveyed, of which then that machine has been specified, um, then, you know, this, this is going to, this is possibly going to, uh, you know, probably going to seem quite logical. However, if you've hired, you know, uh, one, once an order, and, and this order has been placed, then it will require the machine deemed, once it's fit and ready for hire, to be delivered to you. Okay, this involves loading, the machine in the depot, transporting it on the public highway. It's then got to be safely unloaded. And this is often where the rental activities end, because essentially once that, that, um, 
you know that machine's been lowered down or or, or, or reversed off or, or or forked off or craned off or whatever paperwork signed and and that's it the drivers you know ramps are up or or, or uh, you know however it's gone and, and, and he's on his way he's got another load to do your employees then may have to travel it to that working area they've then got to set it up use it safely and when it's fishing, finished um, ultimately either return to your stores area your you know where you store your machines or collected by the rental company now within that use of hire period there are many other potential opportunities along the way to not realize the hazards that are pertinent to MUPS and as I previously mentioned the beauty of the standard of the BS8460 is that it's laid out for you in them four clear stages making your task of carrying out that risk assessment for MUPS much simpler it will identify each activity and then provide you with the information and also a commentary to help you identify the potential hazards that you've, you've identified. And that will then lead you onto the relevant clause so you can look up further information relevant to that hazard. So it's quite straightforward and quite, you know, quite, uh, quite simple. When we transport on the, on the highway, it's been, it's been delivered, it, uh, sorry, it's been loaded, it's now on the highway. There's incidents that's happened, collisions, loss of loads, there's impact with other vehicles. Um, there's a, a video doing the rounds on LinkedIn at the moment of a bridge strike in America where a guy's left a boom up in the air, you know, and that's, that's hit, the, hit the bridge. Um, and of course, environmental issues. Remember, of course, under, if, if you're hiring your machines under CPA conditions, that you're actually responsible for the machine, you know, when it's... Um, you know when it's on on the back of the vehicle um however it's, it's, it's often a very hard argument to have um in, under cpa um that you know you were responsible for that whilst it was on the back of somebody else's truck okay traveling on site okay what hazards well you know clearly the standard does go into in depth this one because it's a dangerous uh, dangerous aspect so you know impact with pedestrians overturns um for machines you know potentially um collisions with other plant vehicles um, you know, trapping and crushing up, up in the air um, or against a structure, um, potentially even ejection from the platform like we saw earlier. Um, the fact that he stepped down off sort of a 10 inch curb um, the first, with, the first with, the, with the rear wheels and he almost headbutted the, the control platform and yet when he took the front wheels down then he, he was ejected from the platform. So, you know, it, it was obvious something was going to happen and, and clearly I think he, the poor lad was set up to be fair. Um, but what about fire and explosion? You know, you know batteries exploding, um, machines catching fire, etc. That sort of thing. So that they're all considerations that you've got to give um, and got to take into account. What about parking? Um, where is it parked? Is it blocking fire routes? Is it blocking entrance routes? Um, can the machine roll away? Can it run away? Um, you know, can it be um, you know positioned in a place where it's better, where it's going to be considered um, to not be in the way? Many calls over the weekends, over the years, um, where you know machines been parked and somebody's you know contractors left it in front of a fire door, or you know God forbid you know parked it in a in, in a in a shopping area where it shouldn't have been. You know where you know if it's going to be parked there, it's developed a leak which has leaked onto the floor, and all them sort of things need to sometimes you know sometimes be uh, be considered. Okay, if we look at positioning, um, so before use hazards, essentially what we're looking at here um, is, you know, often ground conditions. Um, and in the standard, you'd be interested to know that it doesn't define much of the hazards of ground conditions. So you might think, hang on a sec, this should have a huge amount of information. There is a huge amount of information in there, and that was my point earlier. What the, what the guidance document does now is instead of reinventing the wheel and making the document 300 plus pages, it signposts you to other documents and there was a, a piece of work carried out by the CPA strategic forum plant safety group that wrote guidance on ground document uh, ground conditions great document very in-depth document I must add um, and, and worth looking at and worth referring to for all all plant and equipment um, clearly ground conditions are critical um, to uh, the safe use of MUPS and because of this guidance document that was provided uh, sorry produced by the CPA it was just felt there was too much in there that we couldn't include it within the guidance um, in, in the BS8460 so instead and hence you know making sure that nothing's missed or, or left to chance it signposted it to the actual uh, to the document if that makes sense with regards to services um, you know we often think of underground, overhead cables but there are a myriad of, of cables out there and sometimes we get it right you know Power goes off in, in villages all the time where somebody struck cables beneath. Um, but, you know, in, in the UK, we have very, very good um, um, 
safety record touch wood on on, on overhead power line strikes um, unfortunately in uh, in in north america um, and you know i have got people on here listening from north america they haven't got as good a, a record cables are different over there the position different what looks like a telephone cable to us in, over in the states and i'm sure you've been if you've been over there it's, it's a power cable so got to make sure that you know we recognize it we understand it and we also you know identify with regards to underground again it taps into the ground conditions document because if we're going to sit a machine on the ground if the risk of punching through the ground and and causing um, you know a, a void because of an underground service then you know clearly there's an opportunity uh, and a risk of, of tip over okay adjacent structures so people should only travel in the work platform you know clearly if it's permitted by the manufacturer care should be taken you know when traveling the work platform as the movement of the platform caused by traveling on uneven ground can be magnified considerably and clearly can cause instability you can potentially overrun and, and, and impact and strike, you know, uh, structures. And of course, you know, we can uh, we can uh, unfortunately be ejected for the platform. You know, blind corners parked there. This is a stock photo. It's not one of ours, but, you know, and, and no friend, no, no disrespect to, to our friends at Toypen, but you can probably see there that there's not, you know, very little in the way of cordoning off. You can see, you know, there's um, there's no there's a fire exit there. Right, you could argue the fact that it's not uh, blocking it, but you know you can see there's a fire escape. For me, uh, I would hope on the other side of the doors, there's clear indications there that we, you know, we don't block that area. But you know, it, it is it is what it is. It's there. So you know, I'd just like to um, like to you know to, to to take some of these pictures, you know, and, and use them as uh, in the context that I'm trying to, to trying to approach. In terms of weather, well, it's still sunny outside, a bit colder today, um, but um, at least we've got a bit of sun, um, that big bright thing in the sky. But, you know, we need to be mindful that conditions change. We have wind in, in the UK. We have, you know, qu quite clearly today, it's a bit breezier than what it was. You know, lightning does happen. You know, I won't be surprised after we've had this hot weather that we'll have, you know, downpours. Um, you know, don't want to don't want to touch uh, touch wood on the, any, any sort of bad storms just yet. Bank holiday coming. But we do have machines that are zero win rated and that's my point and I still see incidents and issues where zero win rated machines are outdoors and subjected to wind forces folks they're not supposed to go outside it says zero for a reason okay god forbid something goes over or somebody's injured the manufacturer is just going to wipe the hands of you and say well you know you've used the machine not how we intended it so just be mindful of them sort of things um plant another vehicle you know in terms of that I mean you've always got to be mindful that um um, you know, vehicles, you know, can come very close to you, um, you know, in, in, equally mupes. So when in mupes, when in use, clearly mupes are at risk from being impacted by other vehicles. It can cause, you know, massive serious incidents, uh, catastrophic incidents. Even a small impact at the base of a mupe can have a huge dis disproportional uh, effect on the working platform. Uh, and this is because of the magnification, magnification effect of the end extended structure. So it's a bit like wrapping a, 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 a ruler on the table, you know, if you, if you, the bouncing effect, the catapult effect. So we've got to be mindful of this. We've got to have coordination. We've got to have people understanding how far we can go, what the arc of something is, what, you know, we've got to be mindful that there is blind corners. What if I'm traveling and I can't see in front of the machine? You know, do I use a banksman or a marshalling person? Is that marshalling person in communication with the operator? Is he, is he, can he talk? So these are the hazards that you need to consider because, you know, again, failing, failing not to look at them hazards, we can sometimes, you know, be, be a little bit, um, you know, you're skewed by it. it's just a mupe the mupe itself is the hazard all right and, and we need to look at other other aspects when we are traveling okay we've got to consider this, the speed of the machine the size of the machine potentially speed bumps the hydraulic ramping effect you know machines you know that that um hulot ha32 picture there that you can see it's taken off one of our familiarization videos even on our familiarization video we even though i audibly say that on the video the machine may not stop immediately when the control is released. If it did, it would throw you about the platform like a rag doll. It's got to mechanically, uh, whether that's hydraulically, electrically, um, power slow down. All right? And that's, you know, in all aspects of machines, lifting and lowering and, and, and clearly driving. Whenever we're traveling, 
we need to walk the route, we need to check the area, we need to look out for hazards such as cables, manhole covers, building projections. Obviously the picture on the right there taken from the states there off, off one of their uh, websites. Um, you can see there that, uh, you know, unfortunate incident with a, with a big machine that's gone over and that's punched through some sort of manual cover, you know, telecommunications hatch on the ground uh, with catastrophic events, uh, effects. So overhead, overhead obstructions, we sometimes don't think about them until it's, you know, they actually do present a danger. Um, and of course, whatever machine you've got needs to be capable of traveling over that ground. You know, often we find that, you know, still still traveling over over certain grounds is, is uh, you know, uh, the machine's got stuck. Okay. In terms of gradeability um, and, and gradients, just thought I'd put this in there because we sometimes look at um, you know the information uh, on on a, on a manufacturer's plate and we sometimes don't consider what it. Gradients are usually expressed in a percentage, whereas angles are usually expressed in degrees. So if a safe working angle of a machine is three degrees, all right, then it's telling you that's its slope, that's its maximum slope. Whereas a percentage for climbing up a slope, you know, a slope to climb up into you know, on the bed of a truck, onto a up a ramp or, or whatever, that's going to be in a percentage. So MUPs are rated for their ability to ascend and descend terrain. And the highest grade a machine can ascend and descend while maintaining a particular speed is sometimes terms of the machine's gradeability. All right. So um, whereas the gradient will be what it can actually, you know, you know, sit on safely. OK, um, now you can see on this chart, for example, um, uh, 40 percent. Um, this is angle. Uh, um, this is angle of just half its figures in degrees. Um, and yet most machines, probably 25, uh, 25 percent roughly. And there's an easy way to work out R rise divided by the run times by 100. Um, and that give you an indication of what machines, you know, are, are what your slopes are. OK, when we're setting up um, again, Many different ways in which machines can set up. Some are, some are, some are, um, you know, clearly free on wheels. Some have stabilizers. Some have outriggers. Um, in terms of whenever we, you know, deploy a stabilizer or an outrigger, we need to be considering, you know, how, what effect that machine is going to have. And that, and again, the standard will say if you're going to put an outrigger down or if you're going to put a stabilizer down, there is a risk of crushing. There is a p the risk of when that positioning that outrigger or stabilizer, do you manually pull it out? impact potentially when i put the machine down if i've got auto level on hopefully it will level automatically um, but you often find one outrigger or stabilizer will come down first and before that before you know it it's starting to lift as it's getting the point the machine can move and that's what we consider to be that unexpected movement um, and you know unfortunately um, sometimes machines aren't you know haven't in the past been calibrated properly there's a risk of overturning but that could also be a third party uh, uh, impact uh, from punching through the ground should the ground not have been surveyed you know our our truck mount fleets you know some of these impacts um, or some of the pressures should I say from these from these outriggers are, are, are more than you think but not often not as big as you think sometimes we can be short jacked on one side uh, and that's the same for some of the track mounted machines that's out there so just be mindful of that now a stabilizer is a device or system used to stabilize the mupe um, and that without lifting the mupe chassis from the ground whereas an outrigger um, as you can see on these pictures, would be a device at the base of the chassis that increases the stability of the equipment and the capable of lifting, both lifting and leveling the actual equipment. The spreader pad is the pad used to increase the area under the stabilizer, uh, or in some cases, uh, the outrigger or, or the wheel, um, depending on it. Okay, so the standard then gives you further information um, uh, when MUPs are set up, um, you know, on their outriggers. Um, and it covers incidents like when the MUP is potentially on a sloping ground or highlights the potential risk of feet sliding off a pad or, or particularly in wet or icy conditions. There's also when a machine's vibrating, you know yourselves, if you leave a, if you leave a, a generator vibrating on a, on a hard floor, it will, it will start to walk. The same has happened with some machines before where, they've, where they have sort of, you know, chattered away, if that makes sense. And if, if it's on certain types of ground, it can, it can move slightly. All right, um, fitting of any attachment, clearly um, there are various attachments out there. Um, and you know, these attachments or accessories, accessories should only be fitted or changed on the MUP in accordance with that MUP or that accessory manufacturer's instructions. Um, before the MUP is used, it should be checked to you know, determine that the, the fitting has been carried out correctly. So whatever you fit to a machine, whether it's a big hull and lift, uh, scissor lift like you can see on the left, you know, 
pipe racks, um, you know, various sort of cradles and such, or whether it's, for example, like we've got something here on the right that we've um, we've had developed um, to to prevent to, you know objects hitting the ground. It's got to be done in, in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. So that 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 um, capstone that you can see on the right hand side there that's that's approved for use with that sizzle lift all right and it's been manufacturer approved and there's certain terms and certain you know um, stipulations that it must meet okay when we fold and unfold guardrails i've done it myself so i can sit here thankfully i've still got my pinkies um but i have trapped my fingers before you know because you you get you get complacent you take quite you know you, you you know and i maybe shouldn't be saying that but you, you know it's the work's cracking on you you know you do and you're pulling the pins out and you're pushing things down and pulling things yeah and suddenly yeah i'm i'm yelping like uh, like somebody who's hit the thumb with a hammer on a cold morning so often these incidents are down to a lack of familiarization so i hold my hand up there but you know working a height with insufficient fall protection is, is a big issue here now. Uh, I've seen people where the guardrails have been folded down and the guys and girls are still stood up on the platform. You know, clearly there's a risk there. And the standard does say that, you know, there is a risk of falls. There is clearly a risk of falling objects. Um, before we raise or lower platform, clearly we should be checking that there's nobody beneath it or there's no, no potentially uh, people that can, can be struck by anything in, in, that, in that sense, if that makes sense. Okay, a little bit about axles, just thought I'd throw that in that, but axles on a chassis of a self-propelled MUPE, all right, so as you can see, the picture on the right has no extending axles, the picture on the left does have extending axles, so there is a hazard in terms of the fact that when this is setting up, it increases its width, all right, it won't lift the, pl the platform up until the width is, at, you know, until the axles are out in its extended position, so just be mindful that some of these things can be, uh, you know, you, you, can, you, you, you don't consider that. Uh, in the first place the hazard on this polished floor is leaving dirty um you know dirty marks off the tires so we've got tire covers fitted to it it's got a nappy fitted to it so these are some of the things that you know can can be done very very easily okay so setting up and ground conditions um essentially you know spreader plates must be on firm level ground centered on the spreader plate there is new guidance out now um from from ipath and you'll see on the ipath web website there is a new ready reckoner um for uh, for weights and point loads and there's common units available now on that so you can see that but you know when we're doing these sort of things making sure that you know you've got access to them you've got to have the tools that you do you're doing all right during use um so loading the platform, okay, um, quite an interesting one this, because you know, end of day, what do we load the platform with? Well, initially, first of all, you know, my experience is people will chuck all the tools and equipment in there that they need, and then they'll climb in, um, and often they'll find that you know they've they've not really considered the weight of, of what's going in there. So have you overloaded it? What is the risk of that overloading? All right, are you going to overload it and potentially overturn it? Could you structurally, you know, could you have a structural failure? Um, and essentially, people, tools, equipment, but then you also need to consider the weight of all the occupants and any items that you may lift when you're at height. You need to consider side forces imposed by the MUPE and how that load has been, you know, con you know how it's been distributed in the platform. If you're taking, you know, six by eight panels in the, in, in a big deck scissor, how are they going to be positioned in there? Is there a risk of uh, the, the panels falling over and landing on the people inside the, in the platform? Um, so, you know, shock loading potentially, something being dropped into the platform at height. Um, also as well, loads carried outside the platform. Um, so loads carried on the handrails of the MUPE, um, generally speaking, procedures in place, you know, approved systems and manufacturer approved systems. But what about the effects of load carried on the outside of the MUPE and that potentially how it can affect leveling and load sensing systems? OK, um, what about use at height? Uh, as you would expect in, in the guidance, this is a this is quite a large section. So I can only sort of really show you a, a snapshot of some of the hazards. But consider things that, are, you know, common that we'd expect, you know. Um, but what about inappropriately gaining extra height, you know? putting steps in there, mop-ups, stepping on the guardrails. Um, obvious hazards of, you know, exiting the platform at height, um, but clearly, you know, the, the normal that you'd expect, falls and falling objects. Um, what about trapping or crushing in the platform and electrocution? There's, there's a myriad of, of, of things out there um, that, that it's going to cover in, in the standard. So just be mindful that there are a lot of things in there and you would possibly need to sort of, you know, take, take a good time to read some of these things, but then also reviewing your own risk assessments. And, you know, have you carried out sufficient is there enough in there 
traveling um you know again um whilst we not be while we may, uh, may not immediately consider traveling um, a huge hazard i can see over the years there have been a number of collisions between mupes and, and other items such as vehicles and people and even should i dare i say it, members of the public so you need to consider you know how you know the overturn of of, of, of and possibility from traveling on even ground you know for example this picture again stock photograph of how to get this machine up a set of steps you can see the winch cables um you know it's been you know it's been you know helped up them steps essentially massive amount of work to go into something to make sure that's that's done safely and correctly um so just be mindful of these things traveling on site um we often see people you know jib down the boom down jib down traveling forward they've got you know quite a large counterweight in front of them you've got you know six foot machine in front of you you can't even see where you're going um is it safer to reverse these sort of things that you just need to consider um the standard also does talk about airports and, and railways um albeit slightly briefly um but it clearly talks things about you know confusion on on site auditory damage from noise um and heat from you know planes and such but you know other things that it doesn't consider is potentially about radar radar interference from from moving the mute you're moving the mute there's you know on some machines depending on it there's electrical you know um, um interface so how that you know could that you know cause issues to the plane in terms of rail rail side um there have been a occurrences from proximity to overhead lines or the third rail systems not to mention unfortunately collision with rail traffic over the years um, so just be mindful that you know there is a little bit in there it, it's worth going in there and that's going to lead you on to on, on to other aspects when we're talking about security of mupes again the standard goes into it you know jobs finished we're, we're off there you know it, moving on to the next job um, but you've left that machine it's due to be collected you know and we've left it biggest hazard it says about is unauthorized use you know you're not there you're still potentially potentially paying for it um and you know and somebody jumps on the machine starts it up and goes and uses it and causes damage to it but also as well um over the years you know machines have been left in car parks open to the public keys left in them you know unfortunately people will get on them and uh, and 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 you know do what they need to do remember a good few years in, in a previous life with uh, two genie 45s it being used in a car park to joust with each other basically the lads were just running the machines into each other to see what they could do police call them they obviously uh, they obviously legged it but the damage done to the mutes was uh, colossal okay um just quickly going to show you another film um and hopefully uh, youtube will be kind to me this time One second while it loads. This one's a minute. I don't know if you've seen this one before. Not the clearest one. Um, but you can see what he always does this. You can see what he's doing there. He's trying to get this machine down into this area. Hopefully you can see that. Um, he's got himself a little bit caught in the trees there. The cameraman happily looking. So you can see him now. He's well and truly in the conifer. The wheels closest to you, the steering wheels, as you can see. And I'm not certain. I think you might shout a quick profanity at some point. So apologies for that. It's only it's only light. There we go. Okay, so you can see the angle. So he was having he was having a good day. You can see him in the in there. All right. So, you know, at what point did someone risk assess that one? I'll just turn that one off. Uh, at what point did someone risk assess that and uh, and deem that, um, you know, it was a, you know, a, a bona fide way of getting that machine down there, um, you know, to, for, for whatever they're doing, whether it's working on that ground prepared, you know, they, all these sort of things that, um, you know, we sometimes uh, consider. So I'm just going to do the last poll. Um, and again, if you can just, uh, look at this. So statistically, in your view, what do you think is the most hazardous job um, in the rental process as such? OK. If you can just tell me what you think it is. Uh, hopefully you should see that poll now. It says distributing poll to you. Hopefully this is working. Yep, where are we going? Okay, so 81% of you have voted. 
another couple of minutes, uh, sorry, another couple of seconds. We ain't got minutes. Okay. All right, I'll pause that there. I'll close that off. Right, so 41% of you said use um, and 59% said delivery and collection. All right, I don't think either of these are wrong. I think well done. Uh, you know, um, what I would say is though, there have been incidents, uh, unfortunately, with maintenance on site too. You know, plant engineers turning up to carry out jobs um, and unfortunately having uh, serious serious incidents. Um, training, I'd hope, in, in the, in, with the, the trainers that are used, that there's very little in terms of uh, incidents with uh, with with uh, a person on a training course. What I would say is that we know from statistics that the the most dangerous um, occurrence or dangerous um, job is when it's delivered and when it's collected. All right, and we know that from statistics from the rental companies, uh, predominantly in the UK, but now also a few overseas that report their incidents to IPAF. Um, and we know that delivery drivers. God bless them. Um, do have uh, you know quite a hard lie percentage. Um, we then do know it's um, maintenance um, and then it's use. You know, so people using the machines and having having incidents with them. So well done there. So just a quick reminder before we elevate any MUP, you know the hazard is being stuck at you know stuck in the air. Um, there may be a myriad of reasons why that machine's stuck in the air. Person's been trapped person become unwell um, machine failure broken down so you need to consider you know how we're going to get them down um, and more importantly how we're going to get them down safely okay picture on the bottom right is a great photo I use quite often of a of a manufacturer's machine and on that particular machine um, the ground control panel is against the wall all right uh, and that's a stock photo from their from their website so you know again looking at that the you know, first point of call is to go to use you know operator if they can get themselves down if not then it's going to be ground and I would go to the ground control panel to bring it down it's the fastest way failing that I go to the emergency lowering which on that machine is in at the front of the front which is at the far, you know the far end but whilst lowering that down I can actually lower the extension deck onto my head if I'm not if I'm not careful so you always need to be mindful that you know there are there are things to uh, uh, you know to get them down but even a quick check on site even a quick chat with somebody how are you going to get him down how are you going to get that so just a, just a little bit of a, a throw in there obviously with an IPAF we've got standards out there I'm not going to dwell too much out there we've got H1 standards which talk about IPAF um, harness statement uh, when you've been used in, in boom type platforms um, and of course there's guidance then for if we're, if we're working in verticals I asked the question earlier in terms of biggest hazard when using MUPS um, the biggest risk um, when using a boom type mute is in falls and we know that from boom swings jolting tilting the machine away from its center of gravity like we saw earlier um, you know being snagged on an obstruction and releasing the machine so again when there is a risk of someone falling we've got to pro use the appropriate fall prevention equipment okay it's quite straightforward all right, a little bit about maintenance because this will and potentially could happen on your sites. Um, we have many projects where machines are on long-term hire. Only a couple of minutes, folks, just slightly over. Um, and often maintenance through examinations are generally thought to be the responsibility you know, of the rental or hire company. But like I said, it can happen on your site and you have responsibility for ensuring that it's carried out safely. So things like pre-use checks, things like inspections, things like um, you know, previous checks and inspections could be your responsibility. It could be your own machine, like we said earlier. Some of you, some of you on the webinar actually own your own machine. But what if the machines break down? Or what if it needs, you know, routine servicing? Um, what if it actually needs a thorough examination? So there's all them sorts of things. And these are some of the aspects that we've seen, such as falls. You know, people actually being caught in the scissor pack, trapped. Um, explosions or battery battery acid you know there's all these sort of things that have happened um, and we need to you know be mindful that you know they are issues that have happened to maintenance engineers and, and people carrying out um, you know previous inspections over the years but consider how they carry out inspections and and, and we also consider the loan working aspect you know and I won't say I'm you know I've got a lot of service engineers in our business but you know um, and very good very very good ones as you would expect but you know when people are away you know, the mouse will, you know, the, 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 the mouse will play. So be make sure that what they're doing, they're doing it safely and they're doing it correctly. I mean, your site, they are representing us and make sure that, you, you know, you, you, you cover, you know, cover yourselves uh, appropriately. All right. Making sure that you are, they are using locks, making sure that they are using, you know, the PPA. You know, they don't just park the van up and get out. You know, where have they positioned the van? The van is used to, to potentially barrier off an area sometimes, you know, if they're working in an area. So just be mindful of them sort of things. All right, in terms of collecting the MUP, um, 
we need to consider, you know, we've had issues before in the past where, you know, whatever the machine's been used on, um, you know, we've got to be mindful that you may have left the substance on it too. Um, and we've had that before years ago it, within, within our business. Um, you know, we did have an, a lump of uh, blue asbestos left in the machine. Um, and, you know, again, it's finding out who, 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 uh, who uh, you know who used it in the past and, and, and challenging that science but we could be all sorts of sort of biological issues in terms of our respiratory diseases um, and, and of course dust so just be mindful that the, there are things there okay uh, what about machine faults you know if there is a machine fault you know has it been red tagged have you notified us look you know the steering's not working and our driver comes to you know collect and you know he, he thinks it's just another machine yes he does his visual check and walks around and makes sure there's no damage and whatnot but jumps on it and, and, and away he goes you know and, and only to find he you know the first first time he tries to steer it doesn't steer the brakes don't work so these sort of things I put boom operations it could be scissor pack operations you know anything like that we've got to make sure people you know we're, we're informing people um, on the highway you know what about the RTAs um, what about materials dropping off it you know again you, you've uh, you, you basically you know you're basically um, putting the machine on the road it's transporting I mean it's a picture of a vehicle on the road there but you know it could be a, a you know a picture of a machine on the road scissor lift that we've collected from yourselves and you know the guys have left all sorts of uh, rubbish and, and whatnot in the platform and you know that suddenly it's all been blown off and onto onto users behind so just be mindful of that sort of thing okay um obviously rtas um you know it is uh, never a good day when we have rtas um but um, again we know that drivers you know that they are big lumps of metal that are traveling down the down the motorways uh, quite sub substantial um rate of knots all right so from a guidance point of view i mentioned there is a myriad of guidance out there you know various sort of documents that you can use and, and you know logging onto the ipath website you know things for trapping and crushing in the platform how to prevent that you know ground conditions for for, for construction plant there's also a supplementary one for a shorter one instead of the 77 78 page document there's another one um, familiarization fall prevention all these free of charge go to the relevant oh, sorry with respect to bs8460 all the other ones are free of charge i mentioned earlier that the 8460 document uh, does, does come at a, a bit of a cost okay um so just a summary we've gone through competence we've looked at um, essentially table one in the in the standard and, and some of the hazards associated with the use of mupes um, we've looked at you know transport and delivery issues positioning setting up during use fall prevention maintenance collecting the the essentially in the in the, in the um 8460 document and remember i've got well, I've actually got it sat next to me at the moment um but that's all at table one very very much at the start of the document but then like i said earlier if i've got an issue and i don't know where to go you'll find that you know if you've got an electronic copy it's hyperlinked um i think that's the right word to choose um, with the relevant clause you click on that and it takes you straight away to the clause in the standard so very very easy to navigate through it and, and a lot lot easier than uh, um, some people will have, will have uh, thought in the past um, can be can be somewhat um, you know can be somewhat um, um, you know daunting uh, which I all know so that's the uh, the end of the webinar I can see there that I've not well it doesn't appear that I've got any questions it's very um, it's a very small box I think have you been really nice to me and not asked me any questions today um, fair play okay if you haven't question if you have any questions I've got no issues at all with that please feel free to email me my email the details are on there they'll stay on the screen um, for you um, for a couple of seconds um, or consequently my numbers there give me a call um, if you can't get hold of me at all then you can always ring the office and I will always try and help out but that's the webinar concluded for today hope you found it useful and interesting um, and, and that you can take some of the information this webinar generally speaking uh, in about two days time will it be available for you um, and then basically what that happens there is I, I will um, it, it will be distributed to you um, for those who have registered for the webinar. Uh, I've had uh, polls, thank you very much. Um, typically now I've got loads of questions coming through, so just one second. You, just, you would not, uh, if, if I could show you the little portal that I asked to do, to look on this this question, you'd laugh. Um, hi Brian, zero, in, which, does this mean fully enclosed buildings? Yes, it does, yes, so that's essentially, um, no, no. Uh, that's from Darren. Um, hi, Darren. Um, yeah, that means basically no wind can get in there. You've had, I've had it before where, you know, um, factories where they've had a, a roller shutter door open at one end and a roller shutter open at the other end, and the wind coming through is, is funneling effect. Um, and they've got some little sort of pop-up machine, you know, um, up in the air there, and the thing, 
things wobbling around like uh, you know a flag in, a flag in a thunderstorm. So yeah, that 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 would be what that is. In terms of semi built semi built structures, you're still going to get wind effects and eddying effects. So you know I would always say that you know God forbid something happens, the manufacturers take a a very very dim view on that. Um, and uh, we'll just sort of say, well, look, you know, you used it in a wind, in, you know, in, in an area where it was subjected to wind. Um, but um, but please feel free to leave us some feedback, thoughts, um, and of course, um, if if you have got any questions, or indeed if you perhaps in the future want a webinar, um, you know, carried out on a certain subject or or, or uh, with with mutes, whether that's track mounted mutes, whether it's it's normal mutes, whether it's some subject that you want to, to look at, then you know please please feel free. Um, I've just got a question there. Should a mute boom be used for access egress between floor levels i'm presuming you mean in um steve i'm presuming you mean there in terms of climbing out um if i'm not please feel free to email me afterwards there is a guidance document that's come out from my path now about exiting the platform we're also seeing a change of um um en 280 the guidance standard for uh, the the standards for design and safety uh, of use of mutes we're seeing a change now in um some of the um technical um what's the word um tests that are carried out on the machine and you'll see that there are manufacturers now designing machines where um there is a rail which you can essentially climb out of the machine to gain access to a, to a, to a, another part of it uh, another part of the building um because their machines have been tested in different ways okay so they're taking the ANSI standard the American National Standards Institute so looking at how they are how are they tested so testing for MUPS is, 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 is getting a little bit changed I'm, I'm, I'm certain you'll see some change of that in the UK but um, uh, MUPS can be used to climb between different levels but obviously you know if anything's possible um, provided you've 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 uh, risk assessed it accordingly you've identified the hazard and you've put your uh, control measures in um, and you know, you always always consider the uh, you know the effect that something should go wrong. Okay, folks, um, that's it for today. Um, feel free to email me if you've got any other things. But thank you very much for listening, and really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye bye.